we all know people who have their heads in the clouds. Here's an animal who has his feet in the clouds. The bradipus, or three-toed sloth, or sloth, we use both pronunciations. Now, I really ought to be hanging upside down to sing this, but I found this rather impractical. So if you can, perhaps you'd be kind enough to stand on your heads to listen. We should get more or less the right effect. A bradipus or sloth am I, I live a life of ease. Contented not to do or die, but idle as I please. I have three toes on either foot, or half a dozen on both. With leaves and fruits and shoots to eat, how sweet to be a sloth. The world is such a cheerful place when viewed from upside down. It makes a rise of every fall, a smile of every frown. I watch the fleeting flutter by of butterfly or moth and think of all the things I'd try if I were not a sloth. I could climb the very highest Himalayas, be among the greatest ever tennis players, win a chess or marry a princess or study hard and be an eminent professor. I could be a millionaire, play the clarinet, travel everywhere, learn to cook, catch a crook, win a war, then write a book about it. I could paint a Mona Lisa, I could be another Caesar, compose an oratorio that was sublime. The door's not shut on my genius, but I just don't have the time. For days and days among the trees, I sleep and dream and doze. Just gently swaying in the breeze, suspended by my toes. While eager beavers overhead rush through the undergrowth, I watch the clouds beneath my feet. How sweet to be a sloth. Meet the remarkable sloth, slow of movement, fond of sleep, and one of the better adapted creatures on earth. There are two types of sloth, two-fingered or coloepus, and three-fingered, the bradipus. Two-fingered sloths are omnivores, eating leaves, fruits, slow-moving animals, and bird eggs. Three-fingered sloths are herbivores, subsisting on a variety of leaves. They live in the rainforest canopies of the Americas, sleeping up to 18 hours a day. Adept in the trees, they are awkward on the ground, but oddly enough are strong and graceful swimmers. They have few natural enemies, harpy eagles from above, jaguars and snakes from below. But sloths are quite light for their size and can retreat to the smallest limbs if pursued. Their main defenses are camouflage, stealth, and stillness. Should they be attacked, they often survive due to their tough hides, tenacious grips, and extraordinary ability to heal from grievous wounds. Sloths have been known to survive a 90-foot fall to the forest floor and to withstand respiratory arrest for 40 minutes. Sloths play host to an entire ecosystem. 
Several types of algae grow in their hair, camouflaging them, and several species of moths live in their fur, dining on the algae. When they descend to the ground to urinate and defecate, only about once a week, the moths lay eggs in the dung. They're solitary animals, pairing only long enough to mate. The female Bradypus variegatus signals her readiness with a shrill scream to attract a male. The male of this species of three-fingered sloth is distinguished by a brightly colored patch on his back. The mother bears one infant at a time and carries it clinging to her belly for up to a year as it learns the ways of the sloth. Costa Rica has achieved international recognition for its bold efforts to protect its lush rainforest habitat through a system of national parks and forest reserves. But the ecological integrity of even this well-protected country is degraded by rapid deforestation, soil erosion, and irresponsible pesticide use. The sloth's world has begun to crumble as man encroaches ever farther into New World jungles. When the 1991 earthquake shook their home to the ground, Judy and Luis Arroyo rebuilt it as a bed and breakfast. They offered tours of their jungle and island, showcasing over 300 bird species. Their destiny changed when three neighborhood girls brought them a wee surprise, an orphaned three-fingered sloth. They named her Buttercup. Finding scant literature on the subject of caring for these animals, they learned from experience. Then another sloth arrived and another. Before long, the Arroyos became known as authorities on sloth rescue and rearing, and still more were brought into their care. A sloth can live 30 years. Most of the roads on this side of the country are less than 20 years old. When you divide a sloth's territory, it's going to have to come down from its tree and go across this new road to get to its second favorite tree that used to be accessible by the canopy. They get hit by cars. People are always looking for new territory, new places to live. The government puts power lines in for them. Both species will climb a power pole because it looks like a tree and electrocute themselves or burn themselves horribly. Some of them we've been able to take care of and get back into the wild that don't have permanent damage or disfigurement. Kids are really hard on sloths. Kids, because the sloth can't escape, it's an easy target um, for sport. We'll sling rocks at it or hit it with sticks and boards. And this is the reason that we created our environmental education program for children, is to get those little kids here and have them look in the sloth's face and sign a promise, an agreement that they make with us and the sloths that they will never again harm a sloth. In order to make him a safe plaything for a child, a local family amputated Junior's claws, rendering him unable to climb or feed himself. He was brought to the rescue center, and under Judy's care, Junior's claws slowly grew back. He became the first hand-reared bradypus to be reintroduced to the wild. After about four months, we could see that he was eating well, moving from tree to tree as a wild sloth. It was a success because after 18 months, we removed the collar and the sloth went willingly back into the tree. We released a second one, and this one she adapted much quicker, and we left the collar on a year. 
Dozens of sloths that arrived at the center as adults have been rehabilitated and returned to the forest canopy. Yet many sloths arrive too crippled or ill-equipped for jungle life. These become permanent residents and live the good life at the rescue center. The Sloth in today's hectic world of high stress, fast food, and cheap sound bites, this gentle, deliberate creature can teach us much. Consider this. Besides the dolphin, the sloth is the only mammal that persistently smiles. For days and days among the trees, I sleep and dream and doze just gently swaying in the breeze suspended by my toes while eager beavers overhead rush through the undergrowth I watch the clouds beneath my feet how sweet to be a sloth.